Zombie himself, Scion. That is a beefy little man in the front line. I was going to say that uh, the Rice Farmers were a little bit more explosive uh, just with the champions that they decided to pick. However, if you compare these two comps, very similar. They have one person who's going to probably be remaining in that front with the kind of tanky stats and the Thresh and the Scion. However, you've got a bunch of divers who are going to be looking to get onto those carries, get onto the squishies, and just absolutely burst them down as quickly as possible. So it's going to be really interesting to see which one wins those trades. Is it going to be the Echo or the Camille when those major team fights start happening? Like you mentioned... Yeah, look they don't really have to worry about it with Kindred being on their side at this point. Right, and with Kindred around that bot side, a bot being shoved out, Kindred should be safe to farm up. Did go for an initial aggressive three-camp path, but the one going for the three-camp path is Viego, who's arrived we in the top side. already see some major damage coming out from the side of Rice, and they just absolutely decimate weak side veteran. Uh, Vess is going to get a really nice early lead right here, get a nice big push, and that should allow them in order to be able to get some nice plates on here. Nope, the uh, TP coming out right away. <laughs> no, that is the power of the Scion. Your zombie doesn't stop Ooh, the death timer, but speaking of death timers... Lane, you got Ash coming in with some crystal arrows. Nice shots. Flash going to come out, and that's going to be first blood, or second blood, over to the side of Rice. They get a second kill. The cleanse is going to come out as well, but look at this. Kindred's already on the bot side, coming in, coming onto LeBlanca, getting some damage out. That is going to be a double kill, as we have even up the scoreboard. Yeah. Yep. Unfortunately, it was not the target with the hunt, so that means they're not going to get that. Look at this vest already getting a lot of early damage once again on a weak side veteran. Weak side is just having to take the punishment. Vest, though, fighting in this minion wave is just getting pummeled and having their health peppered. And look at this cool guy, Tony, already returned. The dash is going to get stopped, but it's not going to matter as we see Scion just get absolutely wrecked once again. The weak side veteran is certainly starting off this lane very weak. A little bit of CS lead accumulating in the jungle, and the CS lead in top lane really hasn't exploded that much because of Scion's ability to get the minions. Anyway, Atlas. Look at this. Atlas jumping in right on top of this. Kaizo getting pretty damaged up. Unfortunately, they're going to be able to get out. Atlas is going to get knocked by that tower shot. VA Diego is going to be the one who completes the hunt before Kindred, so the Death God kills the other Death God. And we're going to have to see where they take this opportunity. Uh, to getting some vision on the dragon is pretty nice, but not going to be able to find too much more as Kais is ready to rotate over. Both teams are wanting to take this Drake as quickly as possible. Whoa. And Atlas, unfortunately, jumping over the wall right into the opposing team. That's going to be four members jumping right on top of them. Kindred going down almost instantaneously or for Kindred yeah. to really be able to do much. Absolutely. And uh, as we sort of start to get... Oh, we're going to see Cool Guy Tony looking for Cedric in the mid lane. He's trying to get a nice engage onto this Echo. Does manage to hit and is going to get stunned for his trouble. The ultimate's going to come out, though, as we do see Centrix able to get the reset, but the reset is not enough. A huge reset coming out from Cool Guy Tony as he jumps onto Atlas using the Echo stun to take out Atlas. Uh, yeah. Not quite random, but more opportunistic, where you can't really invade the enemy jungle unless some certain things go right, and so far those things haven't gone right. But you have to be opportunistic with what you get, and Atlas looking for an opportunity to appear in this bot lane. Meanwhile, Cinetrix also on the way for the flank. They're going to look for this lane gank. Atlas is going to be found just now, and it might be too late. It might be too late, you would say that, but at the same time, Echo is already here looking for LeBlanc and throwing back the shield in order to try and make sure that they can't escape. But unfortunately, Kaizo has already come down to here as well, and Kindred hiding under the turret. The ultimate goes up, but it's not going to be enough. They hang out under turret for just a little bit too long, and the last tower shot takes them out. Kaizo getting exceptionally low. Jinx trying to pepper the shots, not quite able to get the kill off, though, and Cool Guy Tony manages to finish them, them all. And that is going to be absolutely massive, as that was a two-kill loss for uh, Ragnarok, and Rice just manages to get out of there without losing a single target, and the fight is continuing. Centrix getting chased around, Viego jumping onto the back line, just managing to pepper him once again. We see Kaizo trying to cut him off with the charm. Does that actually manage to miss, but the electric keep proc, and the continued pressure from this undead king just manages to finally finish him off. Meanwhile, Centrix might be in trouble. Sinitrix is definitely going to be in trouble as we see them getting chased down this river. Uh, in the meantime, we've got a fight going on in the bot lane. Cool Guy Tony jumping right on top of Perpetual Dusk and Evan, Evan with an eye. But Evan is going to go down pretty darn quickly. LeBlanca just trying to get these last couple of shots out of Perpetual Dusk and does actually cause the sun to set on his parade. And that means he's going to go down, giving yet another kill. And Sinitrix once again getting absolutely pummeled by this Ari as she just sucks the soul right out of him. Hextech ultimatum in the top lane also means that Cyan's going to be in the middle of a fight while Atlas is getting absolutely stomped by Cool Guy Tony in the bot lane in that jungle, just not able to 
farm at all safely. And that is an absolutely massive amount of trades across this map. And we can see that they're still continuing as Vez just continues to shred through weak side veteran, just absolutely monstrous with those bladed thighs. There's just absolutely no stopping this coming uh, There is no second chances to be had, even though Sinatrix can rewind time, and Atlas might find themselves in trouble. Don't you do it, Atlas. No, oh, the charm yet again is just absolutely... Come on. There's just nothing that they can do. You just walk around, and all of a sudden, the heart causes you to see stars. Yeah, I, I think the side of RSL really need to try and slow this game down. You just need to collect waves for a while. You're so far behind. But you we say veteran slow it forward. down, but look at this. Already weak side veteran getting jumped on, immediately getting back to lane and getting absolutely destroyed. Collect the gold that you can. Stop making mistakes. Don't let your mistakes get punished by the enemy. Collect gold until you can hit a point where one of your, your big... Uh, that minion was just plays plays to be dust. Big, they like overstayed their welcome, and unfortunately, that's going to be a burned away jinx. The cat, uh, the cat hero, not able to save the charm onto the Seraphine is more powerful than her persona, and Kaizo is just showing why Ari is the true pop star of this game. Has been shoving this wave into Camille almost the entire game, which has just not been going their way. Atlas, in the meantime, trying to catch out Kaizo, does actually manage to get it, but the charm, once again, is going to just prove too powerful, and already the Ari is just too far ahead and does too much damage in order to actually get taken down quickly enough, and that is going to be the bot side tower falling, and that is yet another double kill going over to the side of Blue Team. Always in the right place. Place at the right time this game and Chino oh point arrow. blank crystal arrow echo getting caught out he's gonna have to try and backtrack but isn't quite able to get away he's gonna get pulled into this as thresh manages to get a nice hook and pull him into the wall and that is gonna be a dead time they boy as we see for about the next 45 seconds if atlas can find another opportunity in this top side by with an eyes deleted don't even have time to really say very much right there as kaizo once again charm seraphine makes him go okay yeah i want to go this way into the bush where that my death is waiting for me uh and again picking themselves up another kill they're now 8 0 with the 700 gold bounty jumping right out of perpetual dust, getting a nice bit of damage, but that healing is going to keep them alive. Hanging out right there, and Atlas knows that they've been seeing Vest in the meantime, just hanging out. Uh, does pop the bumblebee. Echo almost able to get away. Not quite. That hitbox just manages to get him. And the stun in CC is just too darn much. And that's going to be LeBlanc up going on a rampage. And we see the Rift Herald dropped in this mid lane. That's going to be at least two towers, if not the inhibitor going down as well. And that is unfortunately not a lot that Ragnarok is able to do as we see that the end times have come. And we do see Atlas trying to come in and assist their weak side veteran. But unfortunately, this is going to require a tower dive. The shots are coming out, but Atlas just doesn't quite have the damage. Is finally able to pick up the kill, but it's going to result in the shutdown uh, going over to Kindred. They are able to get it, but at the same time, this base... Is it really worth it? We see this second Nexus turret is about to go down, and that is going to leave the Nexus exposed. We finally see a turret in the top lane go down, and that is going to be game as Rice is just able to easily end this smack on the Nexus while Scion and Kindred are in the top lane. Once again, we are seeing two teams go front line. We don't need no stinking front line. We're just going to bum rush everybody. And they just decide to go for these really heavy, hard engaged comps. And I love it. The, both of these teams want to be up close and fighting. Uh, you are going to have the Syndra doing some really great knockback, dropping those balls on the field and then just uh, suppressing... Uh, pushing back the week and trying to get those stuns off. So that'll be really nice to see. Uh, I'm just, I'm overall looking at these two comps. I can't quite figure out which one I think is I'm favoring. Yeah, a nice ward, flash ward from bot lane, but we're going to look at mid. Ooh, we're looking at Fiora, actually, at the same time in this. We have a Flash coming out. Frozen trying to get on top of the 7th Crusader. Is it, uh, Steve the Crusader not quite able to do it? And unfortunately, that means Leona's going to lock down. Right there, we see a lot of damage coming out. First Blood, Red Milk T is going to get ignited and then burst away by the Poison coming out from Street Smurf. That is going to be huge as we see a one-for-one -one trade across the map. The jungler taken out of the equation. Silas is also getting chased by this Fiora through the top side jungle. There is going to be some trading back and forth. It's just a question of how much damage is actually going to go over. Uh, that is a really well done by both teams. I do think, though, in the end, SGR didn't come out the winner. See by those health bars, Rogue Trader is the one who's coming out of the very poor end of that fight. Yeah, Frozen 1 looking for 
a Zenith Blade to get into the fight. They don't know Red Milk Tea is waiting in the wings, and that's exactly what they are looking for. Meanwhile, P.E. Pounder and Street Smart are going to start up the Drake, not quite being caught on this vision. This is going to be a very interesting play, as uh, currently the rotation is in the favor of SGR, but everyone's here. Red Milk Tea deciding to go for the hard engage and the kill. In the meantime, that's going to require the break off on that Drake take, and that is going to be frozen, taken down by Red Milk Tea as he gets taken out of the equation and gets completely destroyed. Geico gets exhausted, and unfortunately, the uh, Petrifying Gaze does not find a target as both members were looking away. That is still going to be two kills going over to the side of Red Team. SGR managing to pick those up. They're starting to extend this lead. They're starting to get some damage online, which does mean that they are able to take that Ocean Drake, and that is actually going to be really big for them. Two safety. Crisis averted, but Crisis Ooh, again in the middle. Coming in, locking down. We see Cinder getting absolutely pummeled right now. The bomb's going to get placed on their head. That's going to be a nice bit of explosion as the Ignite's going to come out as well. The last tick, though, is going to get frozen. That kill is random capital falls. Red Milk T not able to save their mid laner. I can drag out of there going across the river. Uh, we do see Geico right now getting pushed back under tower, but for Tristana, that just means free CS. Lots of movement over here in this river. We have a nice bit of vision control by uh, SGR on the top side of this bot, bot side river. They're basically trying to force out a pincer move. That is going to be a nice engage, hard engage onto this Caitlyn. Raccoon's going to go a lot of damage. The ultimate from Ace in the Hole is going to come out. It's not going to quite find a target. We do see the Drowsy come out as well. But lots of members getting put to sleep. Geico managing to pick up a kill onto Red Milk Tea. We do see Caitlyn not quite able to pepper enough damage. So that means that the jungler is out of the equation as they start up this Infernal Drake, which is a huge advantage for SGR. Caitlyn trying to shoot over the wall. And we do see a TP coming out as well. Though it's going to be, uh, or TB started, it looks like it was stopped. Ooh, double stun! Oh! Massive from ra uh, Random Capitals that they managed to get a huge target. Unfortunately, they're just going to get jumped on right away, and Geico goes on a killing spree, and we see Archangel right now in the top lane as well, trying to fight this. We do see the almost steal out of Steve the Crusader, but that is going to be Red Team picking up the Infernal Drake, which means SGR now has two, one more dragon, and they're on Soul Point. Uh, grab that Rift Herald, get themselves more gold, crack a tower open. Uh, could swing the gold even massively more in their favor. Geico maybe looking for Steve here. Hard to say, but Red Milk T oh, is right He's the definitely looking for Steve. Does manage to jump right on top of him. See, the thing is, the Black Shield does not protect you from AD damage. However, we've got Red Milk T able to shut down Geico, that Tristana Bandle Gunner taken away. Established really in a really solid manner by Giffy Goobers and helps to allow that bot lane play. Uh, bot River play where they get that massive shutdown on the Geico and now Jarvan with that extra Merc Treads essentially in their inventory uh, it's going to be over to this Rift Herald for the next big fight yeah, like we said, this Rift Herald is going to be where the next major fight occurs, and we do see lot. there's not a lot of vision on the side of Goofy Goobers that's actually able to see what is going on. They have, they're only seeing what they're able to walk into, and unfortunately, that means they have to walk right into the rest of the members. A huge Solar Flare is going to come down, dropping right on top of Syndra. Syndra's going to get locked up. And we have an absolutely massive amount of damage. Shutdown as Caitlyn is able to get a shot from the backline. However, Tristana just peppering with those bandle shots, getting the explosion kills. That is going to be huge as they pick up a triple kill. And Pingu Powder also manages to take down the Cinder. That is going to be a four for one on the side of SGR. And that is going to be massive as they take down this Rift Herald as well. Goofy Goobers yeah. is going to have to make sure that they're very careful and they're prepared for it because if that Solar Flare is able to hit some of their tar their main damage dealers like that, it's going to be just <laughs> nothing they can do. Oh, and no. we have this fight here in the top lane. Archangel getting a little overly aggressive, taking a couple of tower shots they don't need to be taking. And oh. an ace in the hole to finish it off. Really good coordination coming out of Goofy Goobers as they manage to get that gold put into their Caitlyn ADC's pocket. They got that tower. Random Capitals looking towards a fight for this Drake instead of the Rift Herald and Frozen's fine on the edge. Oh, ooh, we got a nice engage right here. The, however, the Spell Shield does mean that the Petrifying Gaze doesn't actually manage to stun anyone. Rogue Trader coming in with the TP, but they're going to come in to a absolutely devastating Death Realm as they get completely put to sleep almost immediately. We just see Goofy Goobers getting absolutely shredded. Very good use of Leona's ultimate by Rogue Trader in order to continue this disengage. But that's just going to mean that the Mountain Drake is going to go over to the side of SGR. And once again, they're on soul point now. So that just means that they have a firm grasp on this. And it is just a matter of time right now, it seems, before they start to finish this off. Instantly by Geico, by Frozen. And so trying to buy them more time, Leona's Flash, certainly a good way to do so. And Archangel might be in trouble. 
Archangel might be in a very bad spot right now. They're trying to find a way out. Unfortunately, they just dropped the grand challenge on top of Rogue Trader. Smart play, trying to get that kill. They do manage to get the reset, which means the healing's gonna come out. However, we see that Raccoon Inquirer has also decided to join this fight, and that is gonna be huge as they get ripped to shreds. Geico is gonna go down to the shower shot, unfortunately, as we see Syndra picking up basically a free shutdown as the Flash came out just a little bit too late in that top lane fight. Yora's still kind of pushing right now. Yeah, they are going to send two members back. In general, this was a big posturing to deny the Mountain Soul. And it's it's a heck of a gambit, but if he can take it, it might just be worth it. Archangel, very low mana. Road Trader is going to look for more. The side of SGR have all turned to the Baron except for Archangel, who looks like he's going to drop. Everfrost goes wide. Yeah, it goes a little bit wide, and unfortunately, Archangel does not have the mana or misses the oh. flash. Does actually get the dash over the wall, but they're walking right into Sintra. Oh, good use of the Repose in order to try and block that. A huge heal coming off. Unfortunately, it's not going to be quite enough as they were not quite able to escape, but you gotta love the effort. Siege is on in the mid lane, and Goofy Groovers really just aren't able to stop it right now. There's not a lot that you can do against a pushing Baron in power and Tristana. Like, the, if Tristana wants to push that wave, they're going to push that wave. Huge flash, petrifying gauge coming out. The spell immune does mean that they're not going to get grounded. However, Caitlyn is going to be taken out of the equation for far too long. That's going to be the solar flare dropped. It's not going to find a target, but that doesn't really Great matter. Shutdown. Power does go down in the bot lane. Silas has rotated up to this mid lane to try and stop this engage. And Fiora is just pushing in the bot side. Already we can see the uh, in super minions pushing into this base. Red Milk T getting brought exceptionally low with the grand challenge on them means that if they fall, that would have been a huge heal for a uh, Arcane Angel. Doesn't actually go down though. So Archangel does have to walk away, but that is going to be the mid tower gone. In mid inhibitor is brought to half health. And that was just really devastating for Goofy Goobers as we can see that one of their Nexus turrets is almost gone. And the hole means that no damage is actually going to come out. We don't see uh, enough pressure coming out. The inhibitor does come back in the top lane, but Fiora is already there peppering both of those. And that's going to be a huge choice decision that Goofy Goobers have to make. They try to go in on SGR. They do jump on the back lane. The solar flare from Leona does manage to find a target under the Syndra. Syndra is going to get locked down. And we do see a huge stun and a burst as Lilia gets exploded as well. Steve the Crusader tries to get the Chain of Corruption off, does manage to find a couple targets, but unfortunately not able to find a target. The base, however, is in the meantime getting absolutely shredded as Archangel just continued that split push and goes for that back door, netting them the win. I think RSL have drafted themselves a true flex for themselves. Volibear and Pantheon, both suitable jungle champions, although Volibear is much better. Karma can go in the top or mid lane. Pantheon, good in support and top and potentially even mid. Now, they can really pick what matchups they want, and Set being a solid lock-in might indicate that Pantheon is going to go up there to duel with him. Not being a big tank, he can throw around, send the Volibear in the jungle, put Karma down there in the support role. That's what I would expect from the side of RSL. Um, Goofy Goobers have a lot of engage on their team and a lot of damage to follow up, but I, I am a little concerned about their overall team fight. I think if Orianna doesn't come up pretty big in terms of this team fight, they can just get raw out damage by the side of RSL. Target. Uh, so I do expect that we'll see that. Bully Bear has a very strong clear as well, so we'll be probably looking to see an early gank in this top side. Uh, we already see that kind of like the stances have been traded. Weak side veteran taking a lot of damage from Rogue Trader. He's going to flash, get flash ignited, so that means he's going to go down. And first blood easily picked up by Rogue Trader. He did have to get very close to that tower, but there are no sums left on the side of uh, Goofy Goobers. Well, only the flash is down for a weak side. Uh, RSL, I hope you see. They don't want to see it. Look at this. We've already got another flash coming out from the side of RSL or on the opposite side of RSL. The heal is going to come out as well, and that is going to be huge. Keeping Evan with an eye alive for the remainder of this fight. We do see Atlas looking to try and finish off this Lucian. Unfortunately, isn't quite able to do it. That's going to be the Volibear going down, and that's going to be multiple flashes coming out from both teams as we do see Steven the Crusader does manage to just barely dodge the Q, and that is going to be huge as we see another kill go over to the side of Goofy Goobers and Ragnarok already finds themselves to get slowly falling behind. And unfortunately, we're starting to see a little bit of a repeat of last game. He's trying to find that target. We got a nasty fight going on already in the bot lane, going straight on top of Perpetual Dusk, looking to shut this Caitlyn down early. The dredge line just misses, but Lucian, unfortunately, is going to get the last set of auto attacks off, does manage to get the kill. Caitlyn barely not able to get out of the range of the auto attacks. That is going to be really, really big. However, look at this. We got Cinetrix already come down. They're looking for this re-engage. They're trying to find a good target. The charm come, ball comes out. Charm goes wide and misses its target. 
So unfortunately, that's a little bit of mechanical misplay, but that means Sinatrix is going to get caught. They're going to take a couple of Lucian shots to the face, but they are going to be able to get away. However, that does mean we see Atlas fall. And so unfortunately, the world does seem to like it's starting to crumble and starting to crack. Ooh, nice charm on Deceiving Crusader, bringing him under the tower. They're looking for this hard engage. They don't want to stop this fight. Lucian trying to get some tower aggro. Does manage to avoid it all. Oh, that is going to be two kills. A nice tower dive coming out from Goofy Goobers as they're just trying to demoralize this team and just basically try and do as much as they can to disrupt any play coming out of Ragnarok. Show that they're ready to continue this fight. We do see that the Drake has been spotted. We've already got Ari and Karma here to defend it. So that is going to be the Drake going over to the side of Ragnarok. We do see Weak Side continuing this fight in the top lane, doing a great job of trying to kite out this Rogue Trader. Rogue Trader trying to find this engage, is forcing it under tower, does throw out the Haymaker, does manage to find the target, and unfortunately their stun was not back for Pantheon, and so Weak Side does go down. Big trade on the Sinatrus can set up a die for Red Milk T if if the Ari steps into the wrong position, Spirit Rush is available, and there is just enough mana to cast it, so it should be got safe Got a root now. coming out right here. Evan with an eye does manage to defend themselves a little bit, but unfortunately the Nautilus is able to continue this engage, and we see this bot lane starting to fall very hard behind. It's already four kills given up to the side of, of Goofy Goobers, and so that means that it is now a 3-0-4 Lucian with 52 CS that they have to contend with. This is a very scary bot lane that uh, Goofy Goobers have right now. Nice oh, Pantheon game. engage, looking for this hard fight, trying to get that shutdown gold. We do see that he's continued this fight. He's going in on top of it. Lucian getting brought very low. The heal is going to have to come out. Caitlyn trying to find a target. Doesn't have six, so they aren't able to throw out the ace in the hole. So unfortunately, even if they had vision, they aren't quite able to find it. They're trying to shove this wave as fast as they can, but those early kills just set them behind just enough that they can't finish it off. They have been exceptionally unlucky. Look at the Zin Zhao stopped his back. He's going to continue this fight. Bully Bear's trying to come to the top lane to fight. And in the meantime, in the bot lane, we've got a fight going on here. Evan I, I am gets a hit by the dredge line and does actually get taken out. We do see Atlas trying to find this fight. Rogue Trader getting brought very low, but look at this. The Xin Zhao ultimate knocks him away. Sinatrix trying to continue the engage, looking for something to do to help his team, trying to find that target, but isn't quite able to. They're going to continue this fight. Do dash in. We see the ultimate coming out. The charm just goes a little bit wide once again. Red Milk Team dodging the ball. Doesn't take the true damage as it comes back. Does manage to actually get the knockups. That means Sinatrix is going to get brought very, very low. Unfortunately, not even find the target. Red Milk Team going on a rampage, and that does mean that we see Goofy Goobers getting brought very, very far ahead as this is now a 0 and 12 game, which just makes it that much harder to actually dodge the skill shot. Huge face breaker coming out as we do see Sinatrix get caught by the stun. They aren't gonna get taken out immediately. Weak side veteran is on this bot side. That calling doing so much damage and we have to see the flash come out from Panther in order to survive. Perpetual Dusk is getting some nice bit of pepper and getting some nice shots. That's gonna be shut down gold going over to weak side veteran. That is what we wanna see come back into this game. That is gonna be huge as we see that they're now going to try and back off Perpetual Dusk, trying to use their range to their best advantage. That is unfortunately going to be Karma caught out, though. We do see Zin Zhao. Red Milk T is caught under this tower. He's taking multiple tower shots, and that's not going to keep him alive. We see another shutdown go onto this Pantheon. Weak Side Veteran picking up a huge amount of gold, filling his pockets. This could be a third kill. We see that it's given over. That is a double kill given over to the Pantheon once again. He is now on this board. He has got a massive amount of gold in his pockets, and up here in the top lane, we got a fight going on as well. So let's see how this goes. We got a face breaker come out. Huge stun. We got Sinatrix getting very, very low. The Ignite came out. The nice stun. Unfortunately, that is going to be Rogue Trader picking up that kill. It's picked up for the side of RSL. No, sorry, for the side of Goofy Goobers. And they're going to want to keep pushing that lead to its limits. Yep. Uh, right now, as we got this, a huge. That was an absolutely devastating face breaker. Everyone with an eye brought it very low. Instantaneously deleted though as Pantheon gets that shutdown gold. That is absolutely dev. There we go. Double kill once again. Pantheon, however, is the only one with damage and he has to run away in order to stay alive. He's going to have to ult just to escape. That was going to be really, really scary. He we do see Weak Side getting some of this gold that he absolutely needs in order to come back into this game. Unfortunately, Atlas. Oh, nice stun jumping right on top of Red Milk T. He's going to get knocked away, though, as they have to dive right back in. There's ultimate coming out from Atlas. We see a lot of damage. Ace of the Hole is going to come flying in. Doesn't manage to find the actual kill, but we do see Weak Side picking up some more gold, filling up his pockets. Lots of assists being handed out to the rest of his teammates. That is going to mean that they have the pressure advantage, though, and they could easily take this Drake Already and decrease this gold deficit by 2k. We'll just have to wait and see if they're able to get it even more. Weak Side Veteran finishes the recall, and that means Atlas is in a world of trouble. No Flash at all is going to get rooted up and taken down by Raccoon Inquirer, and now this dragon is in jeopardy. 
uh, you know, signs of life from the side of RSL, and those signs are named Weak Side Veteran on this Pantheon. Been so massive, getting all six of Ragnarok Esports kills. Unfortunately, a, a little bit of an uncoordinated macro it does mean that this dragon is going to drop. With everyone and I arriving, RSL know they can't win this fight. Going to let the opponents back away from their tower as uh, another blue tower gets destroyed. That one going to recruit and acquire in the bot lane. That one was doomed to fall. Fine to give that one up. Weak side veteran getting mushy. Ooh, Rogue Trader is going to be the one who's caught out. That's going to be a double stun. One from Pantheon, one from Bully Bear. He's going to be brought up really, really low. But the thing is, that is exactly where the fight boss wants to be. He absolutely loves getting pummeled in the face because that just means he deals on much more damage with that Haymaker. Look at that. And Evan with an eye trying to find the flank gets caught out and he's going to get damaged so much. And then he's going to go down almost immediately after they get close to the safety. And then we just see the dredge line coming out, pulling the enemy back in. The, uh, look at the death charge is gonna find Cinetrix, but unfortunately they managed to get away. They aren't able to find that kill. Caitlyn is now here trying to do something in order to protect the team. And Lucian pushing in this mid lane means that RSL is getting put on the back foot. That is gonna make this Rift Herald very easy to take for uh, Goofy Goobers. Playing safe, knowing Steve the Crusader's right there, Raccoon Acquire is there, and two members. Weak side is about to side. walk into four members, walks right over a ward, and that just means he gets completely pummeled. Depth, a dredge line right to the face, pulls him right into the rest of the members of the Goofy Goobers, and they are just able to raffle right on top of him. And unfortunately, there's not a lot that the rest of his team could do to save him. Goofy and now Goobers that they could really put this game away, ever with an eye. Huge, massive miss, unfortunate ability right there as he just walks right into a death bush and get, there's the ignite on perpetual dusk. They are going to survive thanks to the healing, but unfortunately losing the karma means that there's going to be a lot of danger. And weak side veteran walks around the corner and just sees two members of the Goofy Goopers just jump right on top of him. He's trying to do the best that he can. Unfortunately, we got the Rift Herald just doing so much damage to this tower. It means it's no longer going to be a safe oh. haven. Good flash from Weak Side Veteran to avoid the damage from the Showstopper, but unfortunately, it's not going to matter as they just get completely pummeled by the Pit Boss. And, that's and we see now the damage is finally enough as the health bars have been brought low <laughs> on the side of Goofy Goobers. But unfortunately, look at this. Hit boss once again, continuing this fight. Manages to get the face breaker off. Ace in the hole. Not able to do a lot of damage because unfortunately Caitlyn just doesn't have it there. We have Pantheon jumping in on the back line, trying to find a target. Look at this red milk T healing themselves up. Not able to find it. Double kill going over to set. Just huge amounts of damage. That massive haymaker as perpetual dust almost gets obliterated by getting their jaw cracked wide open. Red Milk T manages to take down the weak side veteran, so that's going to be Pantheon taking out a fight. The God of War is gone. Steven Crowder is just going to find an easy dredge line now, and that is going to be finishing off the Karma, and unfortunately, that is going to be a 20-minute game for the Goofy Goobers as they manage to finish this off.